Ladies and gentlemen, we now direct your attention to Commissioner Kuhn's box, situated at the home plate side of the Reds' dugout, where the ceremonial first pitch will be thrown out by the former general manager of the Cincinnati Reds and the president emeritus of the National League, Warren Giles. Johnny Bench shaking hands with Warren Giles. There's the commissioner, Bowie Kuhn, and the man in the gray suit is Julian Goodman, the uh, chairman of the board of the National Broadcasting Company. Bill Salatich of the President Gillette right alongside of him. They got pretty good seats tonight. Joe Cronin, who received a standing ovation in Boston with his wife, Mildred. Got a, I've seen that uh, congressman with a plaid jacket. That's uh, Mendel Davis of South Carolina. He was the captain of the Democratic team in the annual congressional game. And there's Hank Aaron, not a bad hitter. Henry Aaron, sitting here tonight in the commissioner's box enjoying the ball game. Baseball's all-time great hitter. The Reds go on the field getting a roar, as they should. They had a club record this year, 108 games, breaking an old mark of the 1970 team. And also, they had the best road record in the history of the National League this year. Home record, winning 64 and losing just 17. They are really hard to beat here. On the other hand, the Red Sox had the best road record in the American League, winning 48 and losing just 31. Gary Nolan, he was washed up. One man saved him. That was the president of the Cincinnati Reds, Bob Housen. He didn't pitch the year before last, then last year again. Finally, they decided to operate on him, Tony. He had a calcium spur removed by Dr. Job the Dodger orthopedic man in back of his right shoulder, and he came back to win 15 games. Quite a comeback, was in the minor leagues last year, did not have a decision. Sparky Anderson, his manager, we talked to him before the ball game. We asked him to tell us a little bit about Gary Nolan, his starting pitcher for game number three in Cincinnati. Well, Tony, let me tell you this here now. When I left Thousand Oaks on February 20th, I didn't even consider Gary on our roster. He wasn't even figured of one of the pitchers. He just came along as the spring went along. Larry Starr, Larry Shepard, and I would say Gary Nolan's courage brought him back. That is the whole answer in a nutshell. He will win 20 or more games for Cincinnati in 1976. In 1975, it's a great miracle. Gary Nolan this year won 15 and lost nine. He's still only 27 years old. He broke in as a youngster here. Was an amazing pitcher right from the start until the shoulder misery got him. He is not a strikeout pitcher, but has outstanding control, Marty, right? Certainly does, Kurt. He walked only 29 batters during the course of the year, and five of those walks were intentional walks. He's on the black outside and on the black inside. All right. In other words, he hits those corners and moves that ball around. He's facing Cecil Cooper, who loves to go after that first pitch and a fastball, and he ripped it foul back out of play. Cooper's had one hit and eight times up so far. He's had one RBI. It'll be Cooper, Doyle, Yastrzemski. Three left-handers in a row for the Red Sox, facing a right-hander. The outfield is around toward right for Cooper. He's a pull hitter. He hits a curveball down to first. Perez has it. The race to the bag, and there's one down. Here you'll notice the outfielders are going to be playing deeper and in Fenway Park. Well, one reason, of course, the wind was blowing in in Fenway Park. Here you have to play deeper because if the ball hits on a hop, it'll bounce over your head. And uh, that's one of the dangers of this artificial surface. It's very hard, and the infielders play deeper, too. Also got to protect those alleys in the outfield, Kurt. Ball scoots out there, gets by it, could be a triple. Denny Doyle's had three hits and seven times. He popped the foul back out of play. I think they've told him to go up there and hit that first pitch. This guy's around the plate. Don't get behind on him. And the first two batters for the Red Sox have been first ball hitters. 0 oh, and 1 to Doyle. One out. Nobody on. We're just underway. Yastrzemski's on deck, and then Carlton Fisk. Nolan works for the fastball, the curve, a changeup. Ground ball to Perez. There he is again. Same play, same spot, two down. And both of them bounced out on curveballs. First two Red Sox. Nolan's the kind of pitcher, correct me if I'm wrong, Marty. 
he has a reputation as a breaking ball pitcher and yet he gets a lot of hitters out with fastballs he did that against Pittsburgh when he was overshadowed by Candelaria that great performance that's right Tony and uh, looking back over the season he may well have had his best fastball all year against the game that you mentioned in Pittsburgh and yet he didn't get much credit because a youngster by the name of Candelaria struck out 14. Nolan allowed only two runs in that game. Yastrzemski hits a high hopper to Joe Morgan. It's going to be a quick one, two, three inning. And the score at the end of the first half inning, nothing, nothing. The Reds coming to bat. 30-year-old Richard Charles Wise coming back this year to win 19 after winning only three last year. And... Uh, this ballpark is no stranger to him. In fact, he loves to pitch here. He's done very well. He has pitched a no-hit game against the Reds in this ballpark, and he's pitched a one-hitter here. And the first man he faces, Pete Rose, was talking about that no-hit game. That was back in 71 and June 23rd, and Rose said, man, he never should have had a no-hitter. The first ball up, I beat out <laughs> to the shortstop. The next That's two, mean. I lined out. But he said he came up with a no-hitter, and I'll give him credit. He had two home runs in that game, winning 4 nothing. Rick Wise pitched a week ago. He won the final game of the American League playoffs, beating Oakland. He was a winning pitcher. He had some problems late in the season, but he came back strong against the defending world champion, the A's. He was traded by the Cardinals along with outfielder Bernie Carbo for outfielder Reggie Smith and pitcher Ken Tatum after the 73 season. Pete Rose is two out of eight. Rose, Griffey, and Morgan, they've changed the batting order. They've moved Griffey up to number two to get his speed up there along with Morgan. Morgan will drop from two to three. Wise is primarily a fastball slider. He throws a lot of high stuff. He's not a ground ball pitcher. The first pitch is high to Rose, the ball. Pete Rose, will he get those 3,000 hits? I wouldn't doubt it. He has over 2,500 now. Takes great care of himself. Durable. He should have three or four more years. A ground ball to Doyle. The Red Sox second baseman puts him away, and there's one down. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. It's intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pitcher's description of accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Major League Baseball has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. Now we can play ball. Ken Griffey up. Griffey, two out of seven. One RBI. He got a big one. A big RBI for the Reds to give them a split in Boston when he doubled the left center in the ninth inning. Strike. Griffey beat out over 38 infield hits this year. He must hit a lot of those high choppers, huh, Marty? He does, Kurt, and this ballpark with the artificial surface and the others around the National League are really tailor-made for him. Of course, the National League has mostly artificial surfaces. The Red Sox played at only two in the American League, Kansas City and Chicago's infield, the outfield's natural grass. One ball, one strike to Griffey. He has been clocked going to first base in 3.5. That one nearly to the backstop. Same outfield for the Red Sox. Yastrzemski in left, Lynn in center, Evans in right. Sparky Anderson has called it the best defensive outfield one of his teams has ever faced. They're all around, getting to the ball, catching it, and then throwing it, and throwing it accurately. The 2-1 pitch. Foul ball, foul tip into the mitt of Carlton Fist. The infield is Petroselli at third, Burleson at short, Doyle at second, Cooper at first. Fist receiving... The deliveries of Rick Wise. Kurt Sparky did qualify that about this outfield. He did say, I'd like to see them play, or I'm going to have to see them play an artificial surface, where he thinks raw speed is so important. One out, nobody on. We have no score in the last of the first inning. Foul away. Count two and two to Ken Griffey. Perez was kidding him around the batting cage tonight. So I want to see you do something. I did more than you did in Boston. <laughs> so I moved him two bases. You only moved him <laughs> one. <laughs> Is 
that kind of banner sound familiar to Marty being around that dugout and clubhouse of the Reds all really, year long? It really <laughs> does, Tony. They they give Griffey a hard time referring to him as a punch and Judy hitter, and he said if he can hit 305 every year, he'll take it. I don't blame you. Green do was Pete Rose, who ambition was to become the first singles hitter to make hundred thousand dollars a year and he did it one out nobody on we have a full count to Ken Griffey Griffey's played is right now a pull hitter about two steps to right that was Sally's backed up on a three two count Burleson's in a couple of steps so against the speed of Griffey bounding ball to second baseman Doyle and we have two down so the first three men up for the Red Sox all grounded out. The first two men up for the Reds have bounced out. Here's little Joe Morgan. He's had two hits and seven times. He said, I want to, you know, he's got a great personality. He came over and he said, I want to thank you. My wife told me about comparing me to Sugar Ray Robinson, pound for pound. Sugar Ray, probably the greatest fighter of all time. I know Muhammad Ali would argue that. But uh, I said pound for pound last Saturday. Here was the strongest player in the majors. He's little, but he knocked in 94 runs and hit 17 homers and does everything else. 0 and 1. Perez, the big right handed slugger on deck. Two down, nobody on, no score. That one hitter that Rick Wise pitched. Joe Morgan spoiled it on June 13th with a line drive hit two out of the ninth inning. Wise winning that one eight to nothing in a Cardinal uniform. Strike on the inside corner. Good pitch. One ball, two strikes. Wise, like Gary Nolan, has pretty good control. He likes to spot the fastball. His best pitch probably is his slider. He'll throw an off-speed curveball on occasion. I think it's a tougher lineup with Morgan hitting third. Got more speed up on top, and also Morgan can knock in runs and take some heat off Perez and Bench behind him. There's a high fly in the left center. Fred Lynn drifting back, waiting. Three up, three down for Cincinnati. At the end of the first inning, it's nothing, nothing. They had 500,000 ticket applications for the World Series here in Cincinnati, about the same in Boston. Two truly outstanding baseball franchises. Not just city teams, but area teams. They come from Kentucky, Ohio. We saw all the license plates around all over the Midwest here to watch this club. And up in Boston, it's a New England team. Indiana, West Virginia, big fans also of the Reds. Carlton Fisk looks at a strike, and Nolan's in that strike zone with that first pitch. Fisk has had one hit in six times. He's knocked in two runs. Lynn, a left-hander on deck, and then Pet Vaselli. That's the curveball of Gary Nolan. Nolan's been an outstanding pitcher for the Reds, but he's not had much luck in the World Series. He's made four previous World Series starts. No wins, two losses, and a high earned run average of 5.40. There's a blast deep left. Forget about it. It's gone. A home run for Carlton Fisk. Now they ought to have the green wall out there. Ooh, he, that was out of anywhere. Grand yes. Canyon. He got every last bit of that one. Looked like a fastball inside part of the plate, about belt high. That They're is jumping the first on him. He didn't know he's Terry. got good control. Let's look at Fist's swing again. Bench appeared to be signaling that he wanted the ball inside, maybe off the strike zone. Belt high, and he knew it's gone. Look at Fisk and Johnny Luck. Foster barely took a look and saw it go, well, halfway up in that first deck there. What do they call it, the heart of the plate, Marty? That's right, mm -hmm. Kurt, and, and I'll tell you, for Gary Nolan to be successful, he cannot pitch up in that area. Here's Fred Lynn, who's had two hits in eight times. They're still buzzing about that tremendous home run by Carlton Fisk, the first homer of this 75 series. Boston leading 1-0. A high fly by Lynn in the left center. Geronimo trotting in for it. One away. So in the first inning, Boston hit the ball on the ground. Second inning, they're up in the air. Rico Petroselli, the leading hitter in the series, along with Rick Burleson, each has had four hits and seven times up. Petroselli is the RBI king 
three RBIs. Neither club has really worn the ball out. There's a fastball for a call strike. Nothing and one. So a little Perry Como drops behind on the count. One to nothing, Boston. <laughs> he hits a foul ball in back of the Red Sox dugout into the seats. Can he sing? No, he can't <laughs> sing a lick. But that's what we used to call him when he came up. Brooklyn, New York. Folks ran a butcher shop there. Great Yankee fan, signed with the Red Sox. 0 oh, 2. They play Rico more to pull than anybody else on this Red Sox team, even Carlton Fisk. Concepcion is well over in the hole and deep. One out, nobody on. One to nothing, Red Sox. That pitch is high, a ball, two strikes to Rico Petroselli. A right handed batter, Dwight Evans on deck. There's your defensive setup. And look at Concepcion over there in the hole and Morgan shading second. The two strikes, David moved a couple of steps towards second. Curveball hit down in the hole, base hit in the left field. Nolan hung a curve ahead on the count, one and two. That's a fifth hit for Petroselli, Tony. Here's an example of what artificial service can do. It just picks up speed, picks up an overspin on the graininess of this artificial surface. Ordinary grass, Concepcion might have had a shot. Johnny Bench and uh, Sparky Anderson, I thought, gave us a couple of remarkable interviews in Boston last Sunday during the rain. They were very candid. Strike, so and you remember in the interview, Johnny Bench said artificial surface should help Boston because they hit a lot of balls in the ground. And we just saw Petroselli ground that one through. Dwight Evans, one out of six in this series. 274 hitter for the season. Hits a fly ball, twisting down the right field line. Griffey racing for it and makes the grab right up against the wall. He disappeared out of our view. That's what Sparky was talking about, raw speed in his outfield. He thinks that Geronimo, and especially Griffey, has more than the Red Sox outfield. He had a long run. He was playing the right center field, which is where Evans hits on occasion. Fine play by Griffey. As he gauged himself and that cushion out there. Two outs. Petroselli at first. Rick Burleson's had four hits seven times up. He's a tough out. Pitching a strike. Looked like a might have been a slider. Nothing a one. He's knocked in one run. He was. A very capable hitter against the A's, too, in the American League playoffs. That's a check swing. It's 0-2 to the rooster, Rick Burleson. Marty, as I recall, Gary Nolan has an ex excellent change of pace. In fact, two of them, but he threw very few against Pittsburgh. Just three or four, according to the scouting reports Boston has. Tony, we talked about his fastball in that game. Johnny Bench realized he had an exceptional fastball that night and pretty much went with it. He does, uh, I'll tell you, as far as the National League is concerned, he has possibly or no doubt one of the top two three changes in all of the National League. The count to Burleson's 0 and 2 they're playing into the opposite field. Fisk led off this inning with a homer the Red Sox are leading one nothing they have Petroselli at first two away a two strike delivery teased him with an outside pitch. You talk about control listen to this my friends. This man Nolan walked only 1.2 every nine innings this year. That is really control. Five intentional walks in that group. 0 oh and 2 to Rick Burleson. The Red Sox pitcher Rick Wise do up next in case Burleson gets on. Wise is a good hitting pitcher. Outside although he hasn't hit in a couple of years. Well that was close. Rick Wise. He's got his hitting glasses on. Petroselli at first, two down. One ball, two strike, pitch coming up. There's the changeup. It's beat the shortstop Concepcion. The flip to Morgan, sides retired. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, Boston won, Cincinnati nothing. The umpire is assigned to game three of the World Series. Larry Barnett is working the plate. Dick Stello at first. George Maloney of the American League at second. Satch Davidson of the National League is the third base umpire. Art France of the American League covering the left field line. And Nick Colosi of the National League is on the right field line. 
Three powerful right-handed batters come up for the Reds in the last of the second. Perez, Bench, and Foster. Perez looking for his first hit of this series. After knocking in 109 runs during the year and batting 282. They're deep and straight away for him. His power to all field. He'll hit a lot of drives in the right center. Wise gives him a quick slider for a strike. 0 oh and 1. Wise went to high school in Portland, Oregon, graduating from Madison High. Out there in the Rose City, 1 and 1. And we're getting some action. Pat Darcy, he's been an early warm up man every game for the Reds. The 1 1 pitch. That one sunk down to him. First pitch is really sunk. One ball, two strikes to Perez. Pitching coach Stan Williams watches him very closely. That is Rick Wise. As we look at that last pitch to see if he follows through completely. He has a habit of pulling back before he gets through his full follow through. He loses his control and his velocity. A 1 2 pitch. Beat foul. Wise played Little League, Babe Ruth League, and American Legion ball. He began in the Phillies organization back in 63. His 11th season in the majors. He led the Boston staff in victories this year with 19. One more than Louis Tion. One ball, two strikes to Perez. Pitching coach Stan Williams watches him very closely. That is Rick Wise. As we look at that last pitch to see if he follows through completely. He has a habit of pulling back before he gets through his full follow through. He loses his control and his velocity. A 1 2 pitch. Beat foul. Wise played Little League, Babe Ruth League, and American Legion ball. He began in the Phillies organization back in 63. His 11th season in the majors. He led the Boston staff in victories this year with 19. One more than Louis Tion. It'll be Tion against Gullet tomorrow night, by the way. The two men that opened game one of the series. Perez batting, nobody on, nobody out. Poured a fastball, and Perez just a little bit late with it. Johnny Bench waiting. He's had the big hit of this series, I think, so far. That leadoff double to the opposite field in the ninth inning that got the Reds going. Got to wonder right now, as Darcy warms up, if there's something wrong with Nolan. I was wondering the same thing. Pat Darcy, uh, Kurt, you wonder about his warming up so early. Gary Nolan developed tightness in his shoulder that brought about an early ouster in his last start against Pittsburgh, and possibly he could be having the same problem here tonight. Well, well we're trying to check on it. Two and two is the count to Perez. Foul away again. Probably the most, well, they've got so many fine men on this team. They're all personable and have a lot of poise, but Perez is probably a popular man as there is on the team, isn't he, Marty? Kurt, I'd say he's probably the most popular man on this ball club. Great influence on Davy Concepcion and the other Latin Americans on the Reds team. Two balls, two strikes. Perez leading off last of the second. Now the count runs to three and two. We're going to pause briefly for identification. This is the NBC television network. Kurt Gowdy, Tony Kubek, and Marty Brenneman back with you here in Riverfront Stadium. A full count to Tony Perez. Boston ahead, one to nothing. Last to the second. There's the drive in the left center. Fred Lynn waiting. And we have one down. Johnny Bench, two hits and eight times up. One of the things that they said the outfield, especially for the Red Sox, would have to do here on this artificial surface is move back. It does not appear that Evans nor the center fielder Lynn are back very much. Yastrzemski, of course, is because he doesn't have the wall right behind him, but they're still playing relatively shallow, even for a present bench. It was interesting as Sparky Anderson commented in Boston that he had his outfield watch the Red Sox outfielders and play on Sunday the same distances as the Red Sox outfielders were playing. Figured and they knew the wind and knew the ballpark. Of course, a lot depends on who's up. This man's up. You, you're not too shallow. 
There's a high drive deep down the left field line. Looks like it's going foul, though. He hits a lot of foul home runs. That didn't reach home run territory. But he gets out in front of the ball. It's 3.30 down the left field line here. You might have seen when Marty took you around, wanted to talk about it. Did you ever mention those meters around here, Marty? It's never Hunters. talked about much anymore, Kurt. It did when the stadium initially opened in 1970, but I don't think people really pay much attention to him anymore. He hit one 100.58 <laughs> meters, fans. <laughs> the one strike delivery. One ball, one strike to bench. One out. The Red Sox are ahead. Carlton Fisk hit a home run. The lead off the second, the left field. And that's the scoring thus far. One ball, two strikes. That's that slider. It's his good pitch when he gets it going for him. It's very hard and breaks very quickly. Five, six inches. If he keeps it outside and a little down, it's tough. Wise was hurt by home runs this year. He allowed 34 homers. Those are those high pitches. Bounding ball to Petroselli. He'll have a deep throw. And it's there. Petroselli's playing a marvelous third. Down. He made a stop in the ninth inning the other day. Looked like he had a pair of tweezers. And he's playing very deeply for Johnny Bench especially. And here's another adjustment that the infielders have to make. They play deeper and they've got a longer throw. And Bench came close. Half a step. Almost beat it out. Two outs. George Foster's had three hits in eight times. He hit the ball in the nose in the first game. I think a couple of hits and then uh, lining out. Petroselli, for a fellow who was always going to retire, has played quite a playoff and World Series so far. Kurt, our producer Roy Hammerman got in touch with the trainer of Cincinnati, Larry Starr, and Larry Starr says nothing is wrong with Gary Nolan. All right, two down, nobody on. Pat Darcy still warming up, though, in the red bullpen. One to nothing, Boston leading Cincinnati. Foster steps out a lot. There's Darcy. Foster's played straight away and fairly deep. 300 season for him with 23 homers. High and away a ball to George Foster. What a pickup he's been by Cincinnati. They've made some shrewd trades. Not only do they have a flowering farm system but now and then they make a trade that really pays off for them. That's what you have to do. The wise trade has paid off for the Red Sox a year later than they thought. They didn't know he'd have a sore arm last year after they got him from the Cardinals. One ball, one strike, two down, nobody on. The Red Sox leading the Reds, one nothing. Wise working out of that short stretch outside two and one to Foster. Let's check Wise's control this year. He averaged two and a half walks every nine innings and he averaged that's good and five strikeouts every nine innings. Two balls and a strike to George Foster. Fired by the giant from the Giants. That high fastball riding up on him. For shortstop Frank Duffy and pitcher Vern Gesher. And that was back in May 71 when they made the trade. The Red fans said, Who is George Foster? Now they know. Two and two count. Foster keeps doing that to pitchers, trying to break up their tempo. Foul back. Two down, nobody on, a 2-2 count to George Foster. Kurt, I thought Joe Morgan made an interesting observation around the batting cage today. They were asking about them not hitting up in Boston. And he said, it's World Series pressure. He said, it affects us in the way that we are very anxious. We're swinging at pitches that ordinarily we don't during the season. He said, even I did against Lee, a ball that was two, three inches off the ground. Three and two count. Wise. Had a 3-2 count to Perez. He got bench out. Now he runs it 3-2 and two to George Foster. But Dave Concepcion swinging a bat in the on-deck circle. And the Reds 
to have their first base runner. Foster attempted only three steals all year, successful twice. Here's Concepcion coming up. He's had one hit in eight times. He can take the ball deep to right center in the right field. He can pull. Fine all around shortstop. Came back from a fractured ankle a couple of years ago. And he hasn't lost a half a step. Red Sox leading. They have one run, two hits. The Reds have no runs, no hits. We just saw the Reds' first base runner, Foster at first. Cooper plays off the bag a step on him, a holding step off the bag. There he goes. Here's the throw. It's there, and it's through. Foster's up, and he's on the way to third. Looks like the Reds are going to run any time now. And that was not a bad throw either. It looked like Doyle got over a little too late. I don't know if he was surprised by Foster going. And watch Foster. And watch how slowly Denny Doyle gets over. He took that a little bit on the run. The ball was right on the money. He could have short hopped it. Foster winds up at third. Here it is again. This throw is there in time. It appears here on the rerun. It's low. Looks like it might have partially hit the runner, too. An error has been charged on Carlton Fisk, which allowed Foster to go to third. Well, checking, they say. But I wouldn't think he'd charge Doyle an error in the dirt and everything with that one. <laughs> Alan Ross shrugged his shoulders, as you never know. One ball, one strike. Reds have a runner at third, two down. The Red Sox are leading, one nothing. A left-handed batter, Geronimo, is on deck. We had him swinging at that breaking pitch, that sharp slider breaking away. They have charged Carlton Fisk with an error. Mm. Throwing error. I beg to differ with the three official scores. Well, you, you. I, don't. <laughs> I thought it hit the runner on the, on the rerun. Can't charge an error to the runner. Two balls, two strikes. Wise is throwing a lot of pitches in the inning. There's Foster at third, two down. Charlie Feeney. President of the Baseball Writers Association of America, the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, Cliff Keene of the Boston Globe, and Bob Herzl of the Cincinnati Inquirer are the three official scores of the game. The 2 2 delivery. Check swing foul back. Dave Concepcion is the batter here in the last of the second. Sparky Anderson, just 41, despite the silver hair. He was a bat boy for Rod Daydu out of the USC. And Daydu was here tonight, very proud of Fred Lynn and Bill Lynn, who played for him, and Bill Lee. The 2 2 delivery. There's a drive in the right field. Evans is over, and he has it. The side's retired. Evans getting a quick break on that one. No run, no hits, one error, one left at the end of two. One nothing, Boston. Some of the fans around the country have watched all the games of the World Series, and they've seen this Pat Darcy up early. Sparky Anderson, I asked him about it, Marty. He said, I like to have my long relief man up early, warming up in case the starter gets into trouble. He's ready to come on in. And also, a starting pitcher may not have his stuff when he starts the ball game. And we want to be ready with somebody. I think that's a big thing in Darcy's case, uh, Kurt, because he was a starter for the Reds for, for most of the season. Rick Wise, in a strange role, a batter. He used to be one of the best hitting pitchers in the National League. He hits a fly ball in the left field. He's had a career total of 15 lifetime homers, and he flies out to Foster. That's the first time he's been at bat in the last two years with a strange situation of one league using a designated hitter and the other league not, and yet playing the World Series in the old conditions. One down. The Red Sox pitchers, by the way, the last month took 20 minutes of batting practice every day. When they thought, you know, they were they were in there and or had a shot. 
Uh, until then, they never took any batting practice during the regular season. Cecil Cooper up. He hits a high fly in the shallow left. Out goes Concepcion. On comes Foster. And we have two down. Foster one hands everything. Here, one of these years, I like to see the American League rebel and say, hey, listen, World Series time. You play our rules in our part. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, uh, Tony, right now, you're not running baseball. <laughs> <laughs> two down, sure. nobody on. <laughs> Denny Doyle up, grounded out. One to nothing on Carlton Fisk home run. That's the Red Sox story as they're leading in the third. Gary Nolan looks sharp this inning. Comes in with a curveball inside. One to nothing. Nolan, born in Herlong, California, lives in Oroville, California. Fouled away by the little scrapper. The Angels get a player for him, you know, after the season. And I think Harry Dalton is expecting a good one. The way Doyle's come through for the Red Sox. He wants either Fred Lynn or Jim Rice. <laughs> <laughs> he won't get him. Two balls and a strike to Denny Doyle. Two down, nobody on. And Doyle pops it up. Bench points out to the third baseman, Pete Rose. He squeezes it, three up, three down for the Red Sox. At the end of two and a half, Boston won, Cincinnati nothing. Packed and Jam Riverfront Stadium will watch Cesar Geronimo lead off for Cincinnati in the last of the third. Then the pitcher Gary Nolan to the top of the order for Pete Rose. Geronimo is looking for his first hit in postseason competition. He went 0 for 10 against the Pirates and he's 0 for 4 against the Red Sox pitching. Rick Wise has allowed one base runner so far. That was Foster who walked in the second. The Red Sox had a pair of hits in the second. Fist led off with a tremendous home run to left. And Petroselli single. That's been the hitting so far. We haven't seen any raw power in this series yet. Geronimo played as a pull hitter to right. Darrell Johnson. The Red Sox manager, and that's Eddie Poposki. We used to play with the house of David when he was 19, couldn't grow a beard. The pitch. Bounding ball to Doyle. High hop to him on the artificial service. One away. Imagine uh, the New England fans who've never watched their club play too much in artificial service, even when they're on the road in the American League are amazing at these high hops. The second one, like a Wyoming jackrabbit, they get bigger and bigger with every hop. You can become a one-handed infielder on this because you get a true hop, although it's a faster hop. You don't have to get in front of every ball. All right, now you were an infielder. I want to ask you something in a minute. One down, nobody on. Gary Nolan up. Rick Wise's pitch to the strike. Nolan is a lifetime National League at it. Average as a batter, 147. How much did the change from grass to artificial surface bother you? Kurt, I had a chance to play uh, exhibition games the first three games in the Astrodome. We were coming north one year, and it is a grainy infield, and the ball picks up a top spin, and you think you're going to get in front of a ball, and the ball will scoot by you at times if you're not used to it. But you always get a true hop. The ball always bounds up to you, which you, means you can make a little bit better plays if you have to extend yourself. It never scoots. One out, nobody on. Two balls and a strike to Gary Nolan. One to nothing. Boston ahead. Last of the third inning. There's a ground ball fielded by Cecil Cooper at first base. Cooper was uh, playing toward the bag. Well, that one might have slipped into the right field corner. He figured Nolan to swing late. Here's Pete Rose up. Rose has a, quite a hobby. He has a videotape machine at home. And he came up to me uh, tonight, Marty and Tony, around the batting cage and said, well, I got the tape of the first two games of the World Series now. Play it for my grandchildren. He tapes all sorts of sports events, films. And he taped for his home the first two games of the World Series in Boston. He'll tape the entire series at home. Pitch with a strike, nothing a one. Rose grounded out to second base his first time.
He's consistent both sides. He hit 323 right handed, 315 left handed. Bounding ball to Doyle again. Look out, bad hop. Doyle got the handle though. And the Reds go quietly down. One, two, three in the last of the third. At the end of three, it's one nothing Boston. First time Carl Yastrzemski's played in Riverfront Stadium since 1970. And he enjoyed himself. This is against the A's, a three-time American League batting champ. But back in 1970, Yastrzemski was the most valuable player of the All-Star game. He had four hits that night. Four hits and six times up. And he's leading off for the Red Sox in the fourth. Yastrzemski, Fisk, and Lynn. Carl's now made his permanent home in Boca Raton, Florida. Just moved down there. Yeah, you get a little older, you want that heat and that sunshine. How are you looking years at, old. How are you looking at us? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Pitches inside a ball to Yastrzemski. He grounded out his first time. The outfield playing him deep and toward right in center and right field. But they know he can slice to left, so they leave a gap in left center. Very quiet game so far. One nothing Boston. Nolan's fastball is inside. Two and nothing. This is really the first hitter he's been behind on like this. Two balls, no strikes to Yastrzemski. Fastball for a strike. Two and one. Carlton Fisk on deck. Bounding ball to first baseman Perez. Tony again with an unassisted play, his third of the game. And now we've had five, six in a row go down before Gary Nolan. And here's the only man that scored tonight, Carlton Fisk, who pounded a home run to left field in the second inning. That's been it, one to nothing. The Red Sox have had two hits, the Reds no hits. The Red Sox have committed one error that hasn't hurt them so far. This bat through September for the Red Sox as Baltimore Challenge was probably the biggest bat in the lineup. He got a lot of big hits and of course his throwing arm helped a little bit too behind the plate. Well they had the great rookie seasons from Rice and Lynn but the last month six weeks this man was probably the most valuable player in the club. And what a help he is at Fenway Park. One ball no strikes. Nolan behind he didn't like that call. 2 and 0. Oh. He got behind Yastrzemski 2 and 0, oh, but got him out. A left-hander, Fred Lynn, is on deck. This is like a July night here. 81 degrees. That count runs to three and nothing on Fisk. He's trying to keep the ball away from him. Daryl Johnson pretty good at letting his men pick his pitch. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if Fisk gets his pitch that he might go after it. He did and he blasted foul deep down the left field line. He was letting him hit three and nothing in Boston with a short fence but the wind coming in and he gave Fisk the green light on three and oh. Good. I've heard it said of Daryl Johnson that he's a conservative manager as we look at him but we've seen him do some things in the championship series and of course in the World Series keeping his base runners going Playing very aggressively on the base pass. Burleson going after a 3-0 pitch. Johnson played in the 61 World Series for Cincinnati. Fisk is on with a walk. That's the first walk given up by Gary Nolan. Runner on first. Fisk runs well for a catcher. One out. Fred Lynn coming up. Lynn came up to USC as a pitcher. They converted him into an outfielder. Lynn, I noticed the last two games, Tony, looked like to me he's swinging too hard. He's been upper, uh, uppercutting the ball. He started pitching him inside, and he looked like he was trying to open up to get out in front to hit the ball. And then they started going away, and he's losing the ball or leaving the ball too soon instead of hitting the ball to left field. He starts him off with the inside pitch, 1-0. and oh. Lynn lives in El Monte, California with his father and wife. They uh, just told Perez, get off the bag a step or two. This fella can line one down the right field line on you. And he hits it down the line, just foul. 
foul by a footer else that might have been extra bases in the corner. One ball one strike to Freddie Lynn Fisk going back to first with one out and the Red Sox ahead one nothing. Lynn a very smart young hitter. He's learned a lot from Rod Dado his former coach but he said his father taught him more and he's trying to take advantage of that hole between Morgan and Perez. That's why Tony's playing back. He might be the first player ever to win the rookie of the year and the most valuable player of the year award. There's the hole between Perez and Morgan. The count one and one. That's a curve that had him fooled. Beautiful slow curve by Gary Nolan. But I don't know if that's a curve or that changeup he throws that he turns over and drifts away. Let's watch the movement on the ball. It appears to be going away. It's one of the changeups that he turns over. It looks a little bit like a screwball. It does something. Good pitch. One ball, two strikes to Fred Lynn. Pitch again. He lines it in the right field for a base hit. Fisk is rounding second, heading for third. Griffey's throw is coming in. Cut off by Concepcion. Goes to first, and they get Lynn. Freddie Lynn slipped and fell down. He knew the cutoff was executed. He went around and thought if the ball was thrown over Concepcion's head, he would keep on going. And when he tried to stop on the artificial surface, his feet gave way. He fell down and couldn't get back. Well executed cutoff by the Reds. The Red Sox made some costly mistakes on the base of Sunday. Here it is, Kurt. Ken Griffey with a fine arm, and as Tony said, he almost overthrew Concepcion, and Lynn slipping as he rounded first base. A quick throw to Tony Perez, and even though the out call by first base umpire Dick Stello, the Boston first base coach, Johnny Pesky, really a little bit upset about the call. The Red Sox made some base running mistakes Sunday. They would have had runners on first and third. One out. Now it's two down. Fisk at third and Petroselli up. Petroselli single his first time. So it's one run, three hits for the Red Sox. No runs, no hits for the Reds. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Curveball hit up the middle. Morgan backhanding the ball. Makes the play. Great. Great. Joe Morgan saved the run with that one. No run. One hit, one left. We'll have a rerun of that play. The score, one nothing Boston. He plants that right foot. A lot of times an infielder will slide going to his right on the dirt, but you can't do it on artificial surface. You've got to break yourself to a halt. He did it so well. He is as proud of that glove of his as anything in baseball, I think. Well, he saved a run with that stop up the middle and back a second. And the Reds come up on the last of the four, trailing one nothing with Griffey, Morgan, and Perez, the batter. Griffey grounded out the second his first time. Rick Wise has allowed just one base runner. He walked Foster in the second. Shea toward right for Griffey. The infield in. Step or two. Ready to unload in a hurry. There's Petroselli inside at third. Burleson in about three steps at short. And even Doyle's in against the left-handed batter, a step or two. One and all to Griffey. Foul back. One and one. Marty Curdy mentioned earlier the number of infield hits that Ken Griffey got during the season, but he doesn't get a whole lot of bunts, does he? No, he doesn't, Tony. And he worked on it extensively in spring training and really did never seem to be able to come around effectively to bunt the baseball. He had seven bunts during the course of the season but of course had the biggest infield hit he had all year long in the 10th inning against Pittsburgh. He's leading off last to the fourth. 1 1 pitch. That was Wise's breaking delivery and it was low and inside to him. 2 and 1. Pat Darcy is still warming up in the red bullpen and we're wondering about Gary Nolan. Two balls and a strike. There's a high fly in the left center. Lynn drawing a beat on it. One down. Red Lynn's had three put out so far. There's Darcy. He's been warming up every inning. Second, third, and fourth. Joe Morgan fly to center. Gets a hand from the Red fans for a sparkling play off the bat of Rico Petroselli. They don't have to tell Wise keep him off the bases here in this Riverfront Stadium. He flied out his first time. 
talking to Morgan about base stealing. Strike. He said, I could have stolen 80 or 85 bases this year. I'm not bragging. I'm just stating fact. When we got out in front, I didn't want to pound my body out. I wanted to save it for the postseason. But I didn't try to steal much late in the year. Fouls it back. He says, I don't know how Lou Brock does it, but he doesn't hit the dirt as much as I do going back to first. He says, I slide back a lot. And it starts to take something out of you. And he's right. Can you imagine just diving on that ground night after night, day after day, three or four times a game? Take a couple of years off your career. One out, nobody on. Two strikes to Joe Morgan. One to nothing. Red Sox ahead. Last to the fourth. Swung late. Why is it fast tonight? Darcy now is set down. And all is quiet in the Cincinnati bullpen. Hundred and thirty two walks for Morgan this year. Fourth of the league in batting at three twenty seven. Mm. Throw him an overhand curveball and missed. One and two. One out base is empty. The one two pitch. There's a drive hit in the deep center back goes Lynn. He's plenty of room. And the rookie grabs it for his fourth put out of the game. He's a marvel the way he can take his eye completely off the ball, as so many great outfields have been able to do. And he's got a chance to be a great outfielder, but he just takes his eye off completely, as you saw, picks the ball right back up in there. Well, some just can't do it and never learn. Yeah, he was, I said it before, and I'll say it again. You see some come along every now and then, and he was just born to play Major League Baseball. Two down, nobody on. Tony Perez fly to center his first time up. A high breaking pitch missing. Ball one. To join this late, Carlton Fisk smashed a home run to left field to lead off the second inning, and that's been it. One to nothing Red Sox. The count is two to nothing in favor of the batter. No hits so far by the Reds, but two down in the fourth. They've had one base runner, Foster, who walked. They're playing deep. Boy, look at that Burleson deep for Perez. He's playing a shallow left field. There's a strike. Look how deep Burleson's playing Perez, Tony. That'll show you what kind of confidence he has in his arm. He has an excellent throwing arm. He isn't as fast as Concepcion. He's quick. Two balls and a strike to Tony Perez. Two out, nobody on. Three and one count. Now Wise asks for a new ball. Johnny Bench on deck. They bunch Paris in the outfield. They really give him the left and right field foul lines. Bench watching Wise intently. Three one pitch. He walked him. That's the second walk given up by Wise. Here's Johnny Bench coming up. He grounded out to third in his first trip. Perez attempted only three steals this year. Successful what? Foster attempted only three, as we told you earlier, and he's already stolen a base in this game. Fisk has gone out to the mound now to have a conference with Wise, and we wonder with Wise getting a little wild high if he's not reminding him about that follow through to come on down through. What? Those are his pitching glasses now. <laughs> he had a better record on the road, winning 12, losing 5 this year, than he did at Fenway Park, where he won 7 and lost 7. Bench said to the umpire, I want to take a look at that ball. 1 to nothing. Boston ahead. Perez at first for the Reds, 2 down in the last of the fourth. They're back deep for Bench. It was drafted in the second round 
when he was a teenager and Bernie Carbo over the Red Sox was picked ahead of him by the Reds. A strike. All and one to bench. Bench is a great ambassador for the game. He's very personable. Gracious to fans all over. There goes the runner. The throw down. And he's out. Safe. Perez steal. Tony Perez, only one steal this year. George Foster, two steals. They're both stolen tonight. No chance for Fizz. He might have got him had he made a perfect control, but Cooper was playing back of him. And there he goes. And you haven't seen that too often, have you, Marty? I'll tell you, it's very, very surprising, Tony. You expect to see the likes of Griffey and Concepcion and Morgan and people like that, but certainly not Tony Perez. That was sort of a delayed steal. I think he caught this by surprise. And they're roaring here. They were the unlikely sight of Tony Perez stealing second. Two down. That wakes the Red fans up. And Ben, hit the drive, deep to left, going, going, gone. His concentration was broken by the surprise steal from Tony Perez, but that does not detract from Johnny Bench being the kind of player he is as we look at that dugout. He has been a man, Johnny Bench has, who has responded to pressure throughout his career. He's a man who creates excitement with a bat glove, and he even stole a few bases this year. That was the first hit for Cincinnati, and they have the lead, 2-1. to one. Johnny Bench's third World Series homer. He hit one in 71 and 72. And now in 75. And this all came after two out, nobody on. When Perez walked and stole second. And Bench hit that home run over the back wall off the facing of the bleachers. George Foster puts a foul ball in the seats for strike one. Foster walked his first time. And the Reds have two runs, one hit. The Red Sox, one run, three hits. Perez's steal seemed to wake everybody up here. They're sitting back quietly. Now they're still roaring. Right, we had that roaring Fenway Park crowd in Boston. For the Red Sox, it'll be just the opposite here in Cincinnati. No balls, two strikes to Foster. Petroselli guarding the third base line. That one's back out of play. Oh, and two count. The slogan we've seen around the city and the area, everywhere, and they have the banner hanging out in the bleachers off the third tier. When you're hot, your red's hot. Mm. Right now, the Reds are leading two to one in the last of the fourth. The two strike pitch to George Foster. Right at teasing. One and two. As we told you earlier, home runs have hurt Rick Wise this year, and Bench's home run tagged him. The one two pitch. Two two count. There's Concepcion hoping for a shot. Foster played straight away and deep. Two outs, bases empty. Ground ball to Petroselli. His throw, plenty of time. The Reds are gone, but they lead now with two runs, a hit. Nobody left at the end of four. Cincinnati two and Boston one. The preceding announcement was furnished to the public service by Major League Baseball. As we suspicion, there was more to that warming up down there every inning that was obvious 
Evidently, Gary Nolan's arm or shoulders tightened up on him, and Pat Darcy's come on now to pitch for the Reds in the fifth. He's facing Dwight Evans. First pitch to him is a ball. Well, Gary Nolan went four innings. He can get no decision here. He didn't pitch the five innings. They left the game ahead. He allowed one run, three hits. He walked one. He had no strikeouts. Darcy won 11 and lost five this year. 25 years old, born in Troy, Ohio. Lives in Tucson. A ground ball to Concepcion. A little flip throw, and Evans is out. One down in the fifth. Nolan was forced to leave the game because of stiffness in his neck. They've announced on the scoreboard. He must have told his manager about it in the second inning, and they, that's why they had Darcy ready. In case he uh, they kept stiffening up on him. And evidently, the spasm wouldn't release. Pitches in there for a strike to Burleson. Darcy had 21 starts, 22 starts in 27 games. He had a good year. Eastwick, Darcy, McEnany, they came up with three good young pitchers. Foul ball by Burleson. 0 oh and 2. They've tried to change Burleson. Look at the way he wraps that ball, bat around his neck. They said he could not hit that way. They tried to change him in the minor leagues. His manager, Daryl Johnson, did. But he seems to get the fat part of the bat on the ball and had a fine year this year, driving in key runs. Red Sox have one out, nobody on. There's a ground ball in the hole to left field. And Rick Burleson has his fifth hit of the series. He and Petroselli each have five hits now to lead the series in base hits. One out, Burleson at first, Rick Wise. The Red Sox pitcher coming up with the Reds ahead in the game, two to one, top of the fifth. Home runs accounting for the scoring. Home run by Fisk, nobody on for the Red Sox in the second. And Johnny Bench's home run with Perez aboard in the last of the fourth. The more action now in that Cincinnati bullpen. Clay Carroll has gone on down there. They're looking for the bunt. Daryl Johnson has some options. There's Carroll. That pitch is in for a strike to him as he bluffed it. Pete Rose charging from third. Burleson at first, one down. They go to that bullpen in a hurry, the Reds. Bounding ball hit slowly. Cut off by Rose. Rose to second, gets the front man, Burleson. Rose actually was going backwards for that ball toward the shortstop. I think Rose considers that his best play. He says he has a lot of range to his left, and he proves it right here, cutting in front of David. That ball had one more hop to Concepcion. It may have been a tough play at second base as Burleson got a good jump. Fine play by Pete. Rick Wise at first base. Two down and Cecil Cooper the batter. He is grounded out and flied out. He hit very well against the A's in the playoffs. He has only one out of ten in the World Series. Bench from behind the plate is really directing traffic moving his outfielders fostered farther to the left field line or closer to it rather. A high fastball to Cecil Cooper. Reds are leading two to one, top of the fifth. Why is a short lead at first? Now it's ball two. Perez is playing off the bag against the left-handed batter. Well, Perez and. Uh, Foster are going to try and steal. I want to wait and see what Concepcion and those fellas are going to do tonight. Are they going to run everybody? A couple of the unlikeliest Reds. <laughs> you better believe they'll steal if Wise is in there if they get on base because he's considered to have a very slow move to first base and a home plate. Two balls and a strike to Cecil Cooper. Rick Wise at first, two down. Cooper hits a hot shot to Joe Morgan. He boots it. Picks it up and measures it off in time. That shows a poised ball player in that play. No runs, a hit, one left. We've gone halfway in the score, two to one, Cincinnati. Well, we've had a tight first half of this game. Home runs, bench, two-run homer, fist, a solo homer. It's two to one. 
The Reds are leading. It's my pleasure now to turn the play-by-play -play microphone over to Marty Brenneman, who is the voice of the Cincinnati Reds, not only here in Cincinnati, but how many stations throughout this area, Marty? Over 100, Kurt. we got a bigger network than we have. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, everybody, as we go back to baseball action here in the third game of the 1975 World Series. And for the Boston Red Sox, or rather Cincinnati, here in the bottom of the fifth inning, it'll be the... Bottom third of the batting order, Davey Concepcion, Cesar Geronimo, and pitcher Pat Darcy. Rick Wise, who pitched three innings, three plus innings of no hit baseball before giving up a two out walk in the last inning to Tony Perez, then the stolen base, and then the first Cincinnati hit, a Johnny Bench home run to left field to give the Reds their present two to one lead. As Wise concludes his warm ups to catcher Carlton Fisk, Dave Concepcion will. Stroll Platewood for his second shot at the Boston right-hander tonight. Davy is 0 for 1 at a fly ball to right field his first time up. 1 for 9 so far in this 1975 World Series. This young man has as his goal to be the best Venezuelan shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball. And mm. well, you're talking about <laughs> Tony Chico Carrasquel and Louis Aparicio mm. as forerunners. Talk about Aparicio, you're talking about something. First pitch on the inside part of the plate for a taken strike. Concepcion questioning plate umpire Larry Barnett about that pitch. And I closed out the season very, very strong. In fact, he had 340 the final month of the year and closed out the year with a nine game hitting streak. He hits one a ton back into left center field. Looking up as Jastrzemski is gone. A home run. David Concepcion taking the grand tour as he takes Rick Wise downtown with a shot to left center field and well the Reds go out in front three to one. No matter what happens the rest of this ball he win or lose the headlines in the Venezuelan papers are going to be Concepcion and that's front page. That's what happened in the championship series when he homered against Pittsburgh. You mentioned those two names Carascal and Aparicio played against both both Marty and Kurt. Concepcion has more all around ability than either of them. All round for the bat and the glove you're talking about. Here's Cesar Geronimo now as Concepcion homers to begin the fifth inning for Cincinnati and we have activity underway in the Boston Red Sox bullpen as a right hander and a left hander gets up to begin throwing. Geronimo bounced out to second his first time. He is ahead of the count at two balls and no strikes. Right hander Reggie Cleveland left hander Jim Burton. So Darrell Johnson has seen Rick Wise give up a pair of long ones. One by Bench in the last inning with a man on and now by Concepcion. The only two Cincinnati base hits up to this point have been home runs. There's a call strike. Through four plus innings Wise has not struck out anybody. He has walked two. There's manager Darrell Johnson. The Boston Red Sox he has seen his team now trailing three to one and that for Concepcion his first World Series home run. Pitch backs him off the plate as Wise comes high and tight at ball three three and one the count to Geronimo. On deck for Cincinnati is pitcher Pat Darcy. Wise needs a strike Geronimo a pitch away from a walk he swings he hits one back into deep right field going back is Devins and it's out of here. Well Kurt and Tony Cincinnati putting on a long ball exhibition here as they have had three hits off Rick Wise and all of them home run. What great contributions the Latin American ballplayers have made to this club. Bench in a home run today, but it was Perez who stole second base. May have rattled wise. Concepcion and Geronimo with home runs. Darrell Johnson. Well, in Boston, Sparky Anderson during that rain time said, We've had a kitty car running around here, not the big red machine. And you can't win with a half run a game, but we're going to get going and swing that bat. You don't win 108 games and hit the ball like the Reds did in Boston. Uh, they have shown tonight how they can swing the bat. Well, surprisingly, Darrell Johnson has elected to leave Rick Wise in the ball game, although he keeps the two pitchers warming up down in the Boston bullpen. Jim Burton, the left-hander, Reggie Cleveland, the right-hander. 
So back to back home runs in the Cincinnati fifth inning by Davy Concepcion and Cesar Geronimo the seven and eight batters in the Reds lineup. Here's Darcy up for the first time. He takes a healthy cut and does not get Those it. Those are not ordinary seven and eight batters. And well, you I, know it, Marty. I'll agree with that though. <laughs> Pat Darcy up for his first time. He came on in relief of Gary Nolan. And quickly behind to Rick Wise as pitcher faces pitcher two strikes. The crowd here at Riverfront Stadium, and they've got standing room only here tonight, still buzzing on the back to backers by the Cincinnati Reds. Very quiet, subdued crowd. The first three plus innings, the Reds were not doing anything to speak of, but all of a sudden they come to life and lead four to one here. There's strike three call. There's Larry Barnett emphatically calls Pat Darcy out on strikes and that's the first of the game for Rick Wise. Rick Wise is facing a dubious record. I know he doesn't want to tie. The record for the most home runs allowed by a pitcher in a World Series game is four. Charlie Root gave up four and 32 for the Cubs. Gene Thompson for the Reds in 39 and Dick Hughes with the Cards in 1967. Wise has allowed three in this game. Here's a man they refer to as Charlie Hustle. Pete Rose up for the third time and he bluffs a bunt and it's strike one to him as he turns around and comes back questioning Larry Barnett. The Red Sox have out hit the Reds four to three but the Reds have had three homers. Two run shot in the fourth by Perez and a bench rather and back to back homers in the fifth inning by Concepcion and Geronimo. Strike two is called to Rose. Jim Burton and Reggie Cleveland continuing to heat up in the Boston Red Sox bullpen. The speckled Rick Wise looking into Carlton Fisk to get the sign. Rose goes the other way with a pitch but hits a high towering foul ball well back at the seats along the left field line. You now Marty every year we get new fans watching the World Series. I imagine some of them are saying has this ever happened before two players one right behind the other hit home runs. This happened seven times before. Seven times in World Series competition, back to back home runs. Was, thought maybe Tony was involved. Not in me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crowd getting on Rick Wise a little bit. Things not going at all well for him as he drops a throwback from Carlton Fisk. Throws it a hold and holding it two strikes. On deck for Cincinnati is right fielder Ken Griffey. One ball and two strikes on the waiting rows. That one is hit hard in the right center. Lynn racing back. Still on the run. He cannot play it. Rose coming to second as Dwight Evans picks up the ball and Rose will go in standing up with a three base hit. the extra base hits are ringing out off the bats of the Cincinnati Reds. And we saw what Sparky Anderson prophesied. He said if they play shallow like they did in Fenway, they're going to get hurt. The ball was hit very hard, a line drive, and watch Charlie Hustle, if you just call him, hustle from right from home plate. He hit the ball very well, Tony, and as you pointed out, you simply cannot play shallow in this ballpark. Freddie Lynn playing shallow and a deep blast to center by Pete Rose and actually a stand up three base hit for him. Well Daryl Johnson is back to the Riverfront Stadium out for the second time in the inning and that means that is going to be all for Rick Wise. The left hander Jim Burton is going to come on out of the Red Sox bullpen as he makes a slow walk from the visitors bullpen here at Riverfront Stadium along the left field line. So there's a break in the action here at Cincinnati. The score the Reds four, the Boston Red Sox one. 